So Clemson and Georgia next up on the docket here. So, I mean, talk about a tumultuous offseason. Georgia is one arrest away from just losing this game outright. Like they've had Jeez. a lot of crazy stuff happen, man. It is, it's, I've, it's, it's been fascinating to see how, or what Kirby Smart is going to do uh, once the season begins. And maybe it'll just be water under the bridge. Maybe, you know, this, this game kicks off and it's, hey, good old, good old Georgia, back like nothing ever happened. But um, nonetheless, this is an interesting one. So Seth, I want to bring you back here. This one opened again at 13. Our number puts it at 13 as well. Um, and the current spread is hanging around 13 and a half in most places. And you can see that there's ever so an ever so slight edge on Clemson um, at a 13 and a half. I was looking at um, unabated odd screen earlier. Shout out. Get it, uh, use, a, use our code BTB. Get a fi free five-day trial. But... You can get a Clemson 13 and a half plus 100 at Caesars. And by doing that, mm. shout out to our, again, our website, btb-analytics.com. If you go to our EV calculator page, you can type in 13 and a half plus 100 odds. It becomes a bet, technically speaking, with a 3% edge. So if you're interested, oh. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but if you're interested in backing Clemson here, 13 and a half plus 100 at Caesars, you can do that. So, all right, Seth. What is your what, what's your assessment here um, coming into this one for Georgia and Clemson? Uh, yeah, I, this is a really tough game. I mean, I will say the market has given us a little bit of information where we currently sit. And with week one spreads in market, you get a unique uh, opportunity to basically have a three month market, right? Where these spreads are posted. All, most of the division one teams uh, week one spreads were posted on June 1st. So this market is been open for a lot longer than a normal week um uh, so you we've gotten some information there's been a lot of support for clemson plus 14. the market has gotten there a couple times and every time we get to clemson 14 it gets bought back down to 13 and a half 14. and that's what we're currently seeing at this 13 and a half i'm not necessarily surprised uh, to hear what you're saying kevin i mean you can see that there's about a one percent edge on a normal one 10 vig so at plus 100 this starts to make some sense but it's very difficult to understand what you're buying with both these teams. Georgia's returning 76% of their offense. They're returning 55% of their defense. This is the third overall um, talented um, roster as far as recruiting. And blue chip ratio, 82%. Clemson's returning 79% of their offense and 49% of their defense. The seventh overall team talent rating and a 62% blue chip ratio. Um, you've alluded to it. Georgia's got some issues at running back. Um, we don't know if ETN is going to play. Their backup to ETN is injured, but we are talking about a team like Georgia, who we know is going to be deep at you know a position like running back. And then Clemson, a team that has refused to use the portal. We don't really know what we're getting, although we do know that with a you know a seventh overall team talent rating, this is going to be a highly um, competitive roster that Clemson's putting together. But we've seen Clay uh, Kade Klubnik struggle the last couple of years. Now we're going to see the second year in uh, Riley's offense coming over from T uh, TCU two seasons ago. So what are we getting here? I have to say, I don't really want to be a Clemson backer at 13 and a half, but I don't want to be a Georgia backer at 12 and a half. I, I really don't know what I'm buying here. I, this is one of the teams for me where you hear Kirby, you know, sitting there telling you how, um, how much uh, lack of depth they have, all this kind of like opposite of Nick Saban um, rat poison, right? Where he's he's literally poisoning him, his own team. Like he's like, basically, you guys suck. My my roster sucks. And it just feels so much like double think to me where he's basically just like, yeah, I'm going to tell you guys how bad it is. And I'll be like the, the the worst critic. But the reality is this is Georgia. We we know that they know how to re-up. We know that they know how to recruit well. Do we really expect that this is going to be, you know, a Georgia team that's just going to go out there and be like, oh, yeah, we don't got any guys. It's really hard for me to believe that. And then Clemson, I don't know what I'm buying. I don't know what I'm buying. I, I kind of want to be a contrarian and lean into that, but I, I it's a stay away for me personally, even though the value is kind of there on Clemson. All right, Steve, what are you buying then? Yeah, I mean, you know, you made a good point earlier, and that's exactly what I wanted to hit on, Seth. You know, the four, for me, 14 is the number, and that's just personal feel good, warm in my heart, warm yeah. in my stomach. Um, and there's been a war at that number. Uh, and, and for me, what you're looking at is, you're looking at strength on strength, right? We know Georgia comes in with these potent offenses every year, running back, wide receiver, tight end. But you're looking at the loss of Brock Bowers and Lad McConkey this year. What does that offense look like? Now, to Seth's point, 100%, Georgia knows how to reload. Make no mistake about it. 
even though that's NFL elite talent, you know, I'm pretty sure Joe's going to come back with something. For Clemson, though, it's the defensive side of the ball. You know, all their turmoil they've had over the last few years, one thing that's been pretty constant is that the defense will keep you in and win you games when you're talking yeah. about Clemson. And so what is going to give, and I think 14 points is, is for me, is where I feel a lot of comfortable saying Clemson can overcome the uncertainty and cover. And the last point I'll make is, and, and Seth, you mentioned this, the team talent. I mean, look at those numbers, 25-53 to 25-07 in favor of Georgia, but those are pretty close. And you look at yeah. the ranks there, Georgia third in the country in team talent, Clemson number seven. So to me, you have two teams who know each other or two teams who are elite every year, you know, who have had history together, who have high expectations on both ends. You can argue Clemson is the hungrier team, but again, we won't go into the team of sentiment, but this is a game where I do feel like Clemson has the ability to keep this within two scores, but I'm not touching it under 14. Yeah. yeah. And I think okay, the 14 is, enough. is crucial. Like you getting that push, mm -hmm is is big like especially when you're getting if you can get it at 110 or better to be honest um yeah. so it'll be it'll be interesting to see now if i'm not mistaken though there's some question for clemson at corner on in, from an injury standpoint and it's it's actually two questions if two of their corners are are, are going to play or not so with with when you don't use the transfer portal who, who you're not you're not putting a junior back there you're putting a, you know sophomore or two freshmen back there that scares the shit out of me but, you know, no Lad McConkey, no Bowers. Those have been the kind of like safe havens uh, for Beck. This is just going to be a good game. I'm kind of happy that we're not officially betting it right now. Yeah. If you can get a 14 and a half, yeah. I think, unfortunately, you have to take all your fears and buy it. Um, but uh, yeah. but I don't I don't think we're going to get there. I think this closes right at 13. I'm, t I'm telling you, yeah. I've been watching this market daily. I've been watching it for almost a month now. Every almost instantaneous it gets to 14 it gets mm -hmm. immediately bought for for clemson plus 14 yeah. back down to 13 yeah. 13 and a half yeah. yeah makes a lot of sense my last point on this is you know, the reason why i in part haven't uh, bought clemson yet even though there's some value at 13 and a half at the number we talked about again club nick like is he going to be able to air it out the only person in the acc who had a lower average depth of target last year was the backup for virginia Kate Kobenick did not air it out last year. And against this Georgia defense, I'm not certain that he's going to be able to dink and dunk his way to a 14-point cover. But that's just me. So, all right, let's move on, boys. Um, again, if you guys are still here, appreciate you giving the video a like. Appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. We're going to keep, we're going to keep doing these breakups, or excuse me, not breakups, matchups and breakdowns. How about that? Uh, weekly for you guys. So, um, so stick around and keep those notifications on as well.